I'm not going to attempt to pronounce this company's name, but we have already taken a look at the S100 from them on this channel before, and it's a blaster that I actually kind of dig. Sure, it's not the most practical thing for most nerfers out there, but at a pretty attractive $150 for 300 FPS potential power with friction fitting barrels and bearings on the slide that make it way easier to prime, there's a lot to love there, even though the actual body of the blaster has some minor durability issues I hope are fixed. But we're taking a look at another product from the same company, unsurprisingly named the S200. However, it's a completely different beast. Well, it's still a Springer, and honestly, it looks a little bit familiar, and we'll talk about that. But it's the S200, but as it says emblazoned on the side, it's the Fire Rat. And if you know anything about Walcom, you know he loves his chubby little ratos. This video is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped is here with performance products made specifically for men. Sure, I may look like the Sasquatch that wandered too close to the highway, but that doesn't mean even somebody like me doesn't take care of themselves and Manscaped brings the perfect tools for the job. Their Perfect Package 4.0 is here with under the belt deodorant, body spray, and their best selling lawnmower 4.0. It's a waterproof cordless body trimmer that features their advanced skin safe technology that reduces cuts and nicks on sensitive skin. And now with a bright LED light and battery readout and a wireless charging dock. The Crop Preserver is a quick absorbing clear liquid solution that helps keep your ballistic balls nice and dry on the field. The Crop Reviver is a spray with aloe and hazel extracts to keep your high friction areas chill and helps keep you moving comfortably. And they smell great. The Perfect Package 4.0 even includes their Shed Travel Bag and Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxers, a combined $60 value for free when you use my link in the description below. Confused about this ad? My channel demographic analytics don't lie. It's a boys club in here. Click on the link in the description or the pinned comment below or go to manscaped.com and use my promo code WALCOM to get 20% off plus free international shipping and two free gifts. Thanks again to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. This comes as a disassembled kit blaster that you do have to put together, although it's a pistol and it doesn't really look to be all that hard and a lot of it was already put together for me. Your mileage may vary because this was sent to me by Monkey Mods for review and I don't know if they had their hands inside of this thing before I got it, but it's a pistol. It's a MagFed pistol. It's a MagFed Springer pistol. I, a lot of you are looking forward to things that aren't MagFed Springer pistols and I'm totally with you on that one and I have a video in the works covering a lot of the most popular flywheeler magfed short dart pistols. So please get subscribed if you wanna see that kind of video in the very near future. But I like Springer pistols. It's a little bit less useful as an actual sidearm, but a little potentially more useful as a secondary because while you do have to draw and either have it primed to get the one shot or put down your primary and rack this thing off for multiple shots, you do have the added benefit that it's going to be much more accurate and potentially help you save a couple of darts as opposed to just spamming off darts and hoping you're hitting your target. Now, this thing, uh, not gonna lie, looks a lot like the Gecko by Adrian. It is an injection molded blaster. However, there are enough changes here that I'm willing to call this not a clone. Screw holes are in different places. The actual way you prime the blaster is different. The magazine, proprietary, not good. But at the same point, a lot of people were complaining about the fact that you had to go out and buy angled talon mags for the gecko anyway. So it's a pistol. You only need like maybe the mag it came with or maybe two extra at max. It's a pistol, although I like running primary pistols. So it's safe to say that it's most likely inspired by the gecko, and that brings up an interesting point. I hate the clones that steal other people's work. However, is it fair that if one person makes one thing, nobody else can make a derivative or an improvement off of it? And that's where I draw the line. There's enough change on the fire rat that makes it a derivative that could be better or worse than the original design. This is way more comfortable. I hate to say it, it's super freaking comfy. It comes in a variety of colors. Arguably, I should have gotten the clear one, but they had a pink. It's not my favorite color of pink. It's honestly more like a Char Zaku red, if that makes sense. I don't know what exact color that is, but it's very similar to that. It's even got fiber optic sights and ah, just kind of, it's like the actual mechanism looks very similar to the get-go. Magazine actually sticks out quite a ways. It has a push button 
ejection, which free falls, as does the barrel, because I didn't secure that in yet. <laughs> trigger uh, piece and the priming slide which has these cool little graboid things on the side which latch on to the back of the blaster like so and then here's like the actual pusher and everything that the graboid thing interacts with there's also an extra spring it's pretty powerful but i don't know if that's a replacement spring or a downgrade spring instructions oh my god there's actually some english on here after the soft bomb is finished, the slider will hang up in the empty position. It's got a slide lock on empty! Ah, so this is our slide locking mechanism. That makes a little bit more sense. And just a couple of pins and a couple of spring. God, that's a lot of small springs and self-tapping screws. All right, I'm gonna go hammer my head against this for a little bit and I'll get back with y'all. <sighs> All right, weak spring. Ooh, that wasn't the smoothest prime. 99. 117, 110, 88, 113, 115, 98, 109, 102, and I only put 10 in the mag. It looks like it could hold 11. And then of course, Locks open. <laughs> oh, it's pretty neat. All right. Well, that's not bad, but I'm going to put the better spring in there. I'm going to lube everything up. Then we're going to see what it can really do. All right. Everything taken care of. The blaster is ready to go with its uh, higher end spring load. 139. 31. 39 again, 36, yeah, 25, 40, 136, 141, 141 again, and 139. That is pretty impressive for something this compact and the fact it's a Springer. All right, well, that was fun, and by fun I mean this thing is not enjoyable to put together or disassemble in the least. It is cool that it uses pins in places where you'd normally use screws, and, and pins are pretty durable when it comes to locking stuff together, but the actual design leaves a lot to be wanting because the actual slide release mechanism is two parts with a small spring sandwiched between them that you have to fish into the blaster while keeping all three of those pieces together, it's a nightmare. So the only way I could do that is by super gluing the spring to one of the pieces so it wouldn't flip off and fly somewhere and get lost, and then also using some lubricant to kind of softly glue the two pieces together because that stickiness from the lube would keep them friction fit together, and then just kind of fish it in there, put on the slide. Oh, it was not fun. It's, it's not a good, especially the trigger, because it has two small springs we kind of have to like lay the trigger in there and then fish the springs. That's why there's no video for this. It took me like an hour to figure out how to build this thing. And thankfully while I was doing this, Monkey Bods put up a build guide themselves. So I'll just link to that down in the description below if you want to figure out how this thing actually goes together and comes apart. Obvious thing right off the bat, no orange muzzle. Kind of a problem. Something that at least for me and most people in the US is gonna be a deal breaker. We like to do public games. 150 FPS or whatever this thing shoots is reasonable for a public game. It is handgun sized, which could be an issue. And even though this is pink, there are several pink handguns out there. And this thing has a metal barrel, so it looks like a firearm, especially with all this black on it. This front piece should be orange. And I do hope that in the future, the companies that produce this kind of stuff, especially from overseas, includes both a black and an orange muzzle piece. It probably won't cost them a whole lot of extra money. Construction, injection molded plastic, metal parts, and of course, rubberized pieces on the grip. I love the construction of this thing. The parts on the side that are metallic are unfortunately plastic, but they do hold up pretty well. Now, in my professional opinion, while this does obviously have some inspiration from the Gecko, virtually everything is different in some kind of way. The actual mechanism for how the blaster fires and works 
is suspiciously similar to the gecko, but the way things are mounted, the way things are done, are completely different, arguably for the worse in many situations. So while this is obviously inspired by the gecko, it is not a clone of the gecko. They changed the way the thing primes, it has a slide lock, it has a magazine release which works flawlessly. It is not ambidextrous, however, you wouldn't have problem activating it with your left hand, so it's not a huge issue. Slide release. Maybe one of the best features about this thing. And that system works surprisingly good. Nobody wants to dry fire their blaster and risk breaking it. Really, my only complaint was how the thing kind of primed, because after I kind of had to fool around with this. In fact, I added two M3 screws up here, which are supposed to be for like putting in some kind of optic. I put them in there because it gave it a little bit more rigidity. Because when you prime this thing back, if it's not like fully centered or the dart is a little misshapen or something like that, it will be kind of sticky. I haven't had it not fully close on me yet, but I have had it feel kind of gross snapping this thing just back and releasing it. Yeah, I didn't like that so much, but what really can you do? The proprietary magazine. This magazine is not a worker angled mag. It's not any other type of magazine. It is fully unique to the S200 and that can be a problem for a lot of people. Nobody wants to have a magazine for one specific type of blaster. However, this magazine is sufficiently thinner than an original worker angled Talon mag and that makes the grip a heck of a lot nicer to hold. The S200 feels amazing in the hand. It is a very well balanced and a very very nice feeling blaster. And to prove that, I ran a 100 round firing test through it. And it performed admirably. We got about 130 to 150 FPS out of the actual performance once I upgraded that spring. And using the built-in kind of fiber optic sights, I mean, they're just clear pieces of plastic in small housings, but they work. I felt like it was sufficiently accurate even though it doesn't have a scar barrel or anything like that, but honestly, something a, a sub 150 doesn't really need a scar barrel. Honestly, if I were to get another one of these things, I probably would have gotten the transparent version. I think that's a lot better of an option that does give a bit more of a toy aesthetic off, even though it still has a lot of black on it and it could very easily be confused for a firearm for a bunch of different angles. And I'm going to keep hammering that home because a lot of you don't seem to understand how important that is, especially when a lot of you want to play out in public. If you're playing on a private field, nobody cares. If you're overseas in a place that doesn't really have access to firearms, it's probably fine. But here in the US, at least for me, that is a concern and I will keep hammering it home. I thought it was comfortable. I thought it performed great and Maybe my favorite part about this is the price, because while this is not currently available on Monkey Mod's website, I will have a link down to their website in the description below, because they did send this out to me for review. I did not pay for it. The price, the point that they are trying to reach for this thing is 50 US dollars, which is very inexpensive for a blaster like this. It's not exactly super cheap or anything like that, but you get a lot for your money, I feel. But for 150 FPS, basically a better version of the Dart Zone Mark II. Yeah, I can see this being well worth $50, but I don't know if that includes the upgraded spring, the metal plunger tube or anything like that. That remains to be seen. But if you're paying, you know, 50, 60 bucks for this kind of thing, I'd say it's worth it. Even if you do have to put it together yourself, that is something that apparently Monkey Mods has to disassemble the blaster before shipping it out so it's not confused as an actual firearm. Some other companies don't have to do that. I'm not sure if that's exactly the way things are going to go, but yes, it is kind of a finicky build and I'm going to highly recommend that you have super glue, super glue accelerant, and maybe even a pair of tweezers on standby to put this thing together. But overall, I think this thing's pretty freaking amazing. I do like it quite a bit. Of course I'm going to like it. I like the freaking gecko a lot. And this thing is a more comfortable gecko. It's the evolved kind of version of it. There are things I think that were a downgrade from the original gecko. I like the slide on the gecko. I can see why you would want to have the rear prime back here because that does mean it's a little bit easier to keep the thing on target. And if it had like a T-pull or something, that would be even better. It doesn't, which means you're still kind of priming it like that, which isn't the most comfortable thing in the world, but keeping the action back here means it's easier for you to like shoot around corners and shoot in tight spaces, as opposed to completely taking the thing off target every single time to prime it. But you don't get the fancy option to have like a pump grip on it, which is something I love about the original Gecko. And overall, I think that is a slight downgrade, but that may be down to personal preference. There is one rail down at the bottom right here, but you can't easily slide things on. You're just going to have to have accessories that clamp on. Maybe there's specific accessories coming out for the fire rat. I'm not entirely certain, but the package they have here and the price point they have in mind is very compelling and I am quite interested. However, this does look like a firearm. 
more so than most other blasters way more so than things like the dart zone pro mark ii I'm Walcoma7, that's all I've got for you. If you're interested in the Fire Rat, I will have a link down below the Monkey Mob's website. You can kind of check that out to look to see when it actually does launch. And when it does, I will update the link when I can. I think it's pretty good and I'm pretty happy with it. It's a great sidearm blaster and it's a great secondary type of blaster. It's not the best sidearm ever because of course you'd want to have something you could very easily draw and rattle off shots with, but that kind of blaster has a specific use over something like this. So keep that in mind. Yes, this is all if you got to the end of the video. You like what I do here, so please hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment, ring the bell, do all that algorithmic garbage to help the channel grow so you can help the hobby grow. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different video. You gotta up, up,